So let's take a look at 8.5. Okay, that's the same section for the whole week. Okay, this will be part one. So what is a vector? So basically what, what a vector is, is if you talk about it like in terms of um, something you might do in science, it represents, one way you can use it is to represent an object that's moving. To describe an object that's moving, you have to describe two things about it. First of all, how fast is it going? And in what direction is it going? If you can describe the speed and the direction, that will completely describe how the object is moving. And that's exactly what a vector does. A vector is used to describe two things, speed and direction. Now, I, I said speed. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a speed. It, it does have to be a direction. Um, but besides a, a speed, it could also represent, like if you were pushing on something, how hard are you pushing on it? And in what direction are you pushing? Okay, how hard you're pushing is an amount of force. Okay? So a vector can also be used to represent something like that. But those are pretty much the two things that we would talk about in here. Either how fast something's going and its direction, or maybe how hard you're, you're pushing or pulling on something. And in what direction you're pushing or pulling. Because there's a difference between pushing down with you know, like 100 pounds of force and then pulling up with 100 pounds of force. They're both the same amount of force, but they're different directions. Okay, so that, that makes a difference. So let me, that's there. So one thing, I think some of you saw me bring it up earlier. Um, you can think of like airplanes, like travel. Each, each airplane basically has um, a vector. So let me bring that up. So you don't see arrows. That's usually how you represent a vector. You put it as an arrow. But in this case, you can kind of think of like the direction the plane is pointing. Um, that's that's like the arrow. Okay, which way it's going. So if we click on click on one, we should be able to okay, double click, get some information about it. And the two things I'm looking for are the, the magnitude and the direction. Okay, and that's what I would need if I wanted to describe it as a vector. And I've got those two things right here. So the speed, uh, 639 miles an hour. That's, that's pretty fast for a plane. Usually they go about 500 something. Maybe they're trying to get out in front of the weather or something, trying to beat the weather. Um, and then the direction, well, in a plane, they call it the route. Now the route is a bunch of letters. I can't, you know, I don't know what the letters all mean. But if I click on uh, what it just said, I can look and see the actual direction. <coughs> this plane was coming from the west, and it was heading east. So when you head east, um, that's a compass direction of like 90. Like 90 would be directly east. So anywhere like between 70. 70 is a little bit like northeast. Um, 99 is a little bit southeast. But Overall, this plane is traveling east. Okay. It might it might turn, you know, for a little bit and go in a different direction, but overall, it's kind of in the 90s, hundreds, <coughs> so it's heading east. That's a little bit more complicated vector than we're gonna work with. When we have a direction, it's just one direction. It doesn't like change. Okay, just one direction. All right. So any any question on that? So the plane has a magnitude and it has a direction. So if we go back. Um, it looks like all these planes are close, but you got to remember, you know, those two planes are, you know, probably a hundred miles apart. So they're not, they're not really that close. Um, and they could also be at different altitudes. So that that complicates it a little bit too, because not only are we trying to track all the planes 2D, we're looking at them in 3D. So two planes that look like they're going right on top of each other. One maybe is on the ground. One maybe is at you know, 30,000 feet. Most of what we do with vectors is two. In fact, well, yeah, Monday, the first three days of vectors, it's all basically two. 
Um, we'll look at a little bit with 3D, um, but we don't do a lot with 3D. All right, so let's take a look at how we could kind of organize these as vectors. So if you want to visualize it, the way to do it would be with an arrow. What do you think about the arrow? What could we change about the arrow to represent a plane going faster? Maybe a double line? A bigger arrow. And what do you mean by bigger? Like thicker or? Like thicker. Thicker. You can go like long. Like, <laughs> instead of drawing like a thin line, draw like a, like a thick, a thick. A so make it like a thicker line? A so longer arrow. Line. OK. A longer yeah, we make it longer. So. Let's say you had uh, a plane traveling east, right? and then you had this plane traveling east. The difference is they're both in the same direction. The bottom one looks like it's going twice as fast as the top one. So the length of the arrow represents the, um, the magnitude. If these were forces, this would represent like somebody pulling to the right, and the bottom one is also somebody <coughs> pulling to the right. But the bottom one is pulling twice as hard as the top one because it's a longer, it's a longer arrow. So length indicates magnitude, and the arrowhead indicates the direction. So whichever way you point the arrow, that's the direction that it's going. So we'll we'll do a little bit with sketching, but really. The best thing to use sketching for is a word problem. That's, that's where you've got to kind of visualize what's happening. Other than a word problem, I would say the only reason you'd use sketching for vectors is if you're just trying to first understand how it works. But once we get beyond that, sketching will be just for word problems. But that's how you can sketch vectors. So when you draw a vector, it's, it doesn't go on forever. Okay. If you had an arrow that went on forever and it never stopped, that would effectively mean like an infinite magnitude, which would mean something that's going infinitely fast or you know, an amount of force that was an infinite amount of force. Uh, that, that wouldn't make sense. So vectors have a start point and a stop point. The start point we call the initial, and the stop is the terminal. Okay, and in my case, I just call the start point P and the terminal point Q. Uh, call them whatever you want. So in geometry, you might use a notation uh, like PQ and put an arrow on top of it, kind of like a like a ray from geometry. Um, you, you can I've seen that notation, but we most of the time we use a single letter to represent a vector. Okay, so let's say I wanted to name this, and I wanted to call that vector M. I want to just give it a name. There's two ways I can do that. I can either put an M with an arrow on top of it, and in our notation, the arrow means it's a vector, or, which I'm going to use most of the time, I'm just going to make it a bold letter. Okay, so when you see a bold letter uh, in the homework, that's not referring to a variable. That is the name of a vector. Okay, so it's just naming this picture. Um, here's another example. Let me show you. Does not work. <coughs> uh, so let's just see if I can pull it up and see a bold letter somewhere. Um, yeah. So like V and W, those are bold letters, and those are names of vectors. So that means you need to go look over at the picture. Uh, there's the picture of V, and there's the picture of W. Okay, so they're just the names of letters. You can usually tell it's bold, especially if it's got something next to it, like the three. 
In this case, the three is not bold, and the I is. Any question on that notation? Using a bold letter or the letter with an arrow, but I, again, I don't use that one. I just stick with the bold letter. Okay. So let's, first thing we want to look at is basically how do you take two vectors and add them and subtract them? This is going to be very visual, so it'll, it'll kind of make, it'll make sense. Let's say you had, um, I don't know, like a boat, and there was wind. Well, actually not even wind. Let's say you took a fan, <coughs> two, two fans, and you had one fan, a little boat, you know, a tiny boat, a little fan blowing up, and then you had another fan aimed this way. What's going to happen to the boat? Right, it's going to go up and to the right. It's going to be a combination of this one and this one together. In fact, visually, it's going to look exactly like this. Start here, stop here, and connect them. Okay. What I just drew in red, that's a visual for the direction the boat's going to go if you had a fan blowing you know, up and to the right. So the idea is when you combine two vectors together, like two sources of wind or you know whatever, you get a brand new vector. Notice the new vector. It points in a different direction than both the original ones. This one was up, this one is right. That's up and right. It's a combination of the two. And it has a different length than the original ones. So the point is, when you take two vectors and combine them together, you get a brand new vector. Now, when you combine them, do you think the direction always has to change? No. No. How, what kind of vectors could you combine together that when you combine them, it would still point the same way as the original? Two vectors facing the same way? Yep. So if you had like a fan, blowing that way, and then you had another fan blowing that way. When you combine the two together, you basically get this. So you get an even more powerful vector. You get a longer vector pointing exactly the same way as the original two, but it's longer which means it's stronger because it's these two combined together. Okay, any question on that? All right. So I'm gonna show you how I just added those two vectors together. Let me, let me do two vectors one more time visually and I think when you write it, it'll, it'll make sense. Here's one vector. Here's another vector. Let's say you want to know what's going to happen when you combine them. All you have to do is connect them exactly like that, and then draw the diagonal, just like that. So if you combine the black vector and the red vector together, that's what it looks like as a picture. Let me explain how I, how I did that. Okay, so we, we already did that. I just did this on the other page, so I'm not going to do that again. So what you have to do is line the vectors up so that the end of one and the beginning of the next one are right on top of each other. Let's call the black one V, call the red one W. Position it so that the end of V, that's right there, is right on top of the starting point of W. That's right there. So line them up just like that. Okay, that's the first one. OK, 
Okay, then to visualize what, what it would look like if those two were combined together, you're going to draw an arrow from the starting point of the first one, which is here, to the ending point of the second one, which is over here. Just like that. And you can, you can do that for as many vectors as you have. So you had five vectors. You got one like that, one like that, one like that. I'm just going to do four. One like that. And you want to know what would happen if you had like an object, like a little boat, and you had four fans blowing on it like that. <coughs> Which, how's it going to, how's it going to go? Well, first of all, if this was all like different wind directions, are they all working together? No, some of them are blowing in opposite directions. It doesn't matter how you connect them all. The order. Okay. So let's take the blue one, put the red one, put the purple one, and put the green one. So if you combine them all together, the final answer would be something that looks like this. Go from where you started to where you stopped. That's the result of combining them all together. Now, um, let me write down the order I did it, and let me just switch it. So we did blue, red, purple, green. All right, well, let's do it a little different. Um, let's start with purple. Let's put red on the end. Then I'll do green, and I'll do blue. Shouldn't make a difference. If I connect here to where blue ends, it should look exactly the same. Yeah, pretty close. So the order you connect them in, it doesn't, doesn't make a difference. Is there any question on that idea? We usually don't do it with four. We usually do it with just two. Let's, let's try it. And sometimes you can kind of visualize, you know, what, what it's going to look like. You've got V that points down and to the right. You've got W pointing to the right. What direction is it going to point in when we combine the two together? Southeast. Yeah. And it, it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be longer than either one of those. And it's going to point not quite as much down, but probably still down, but not as much down, because okay, it's going to be blowing more to the right. Okay, so to me, doesn't matter where you put it on the grid. I'm just, I'm just putting it anywhere. Okay, so there's B. And now, where would I position W? How would you describe to me where to where to put it? terminal of V? Yeah, it's position the initial point of W right on the terminal point of V. Just like that. When you connect vectors, it has to make kind of like a path of arrows, all pointing the same way. If you ever have something like this, that's that's a problem. You can't have that's not how you connect them. Okay, you connect the end of one to the start of the other. So you connect an arrowhead to something that's not an arrowhead. Okay. So there's V with W on the end. And how do you draw the final answer? The initial of V to the terminal of W. That's not perfect, but it's pretty close. There you go. That's your answer. Just an answer is a picture. That's that's the answer. Now, what if I connected it the, the other way, from here 
to here. Would that be the same vector? No. No. What, what would be the same? If, well, I mean, if I, if I drew that one in like this, what, what is the same about that one? The magnitude is the same, but it's 180 degrees in the wrong direction. Yeah. But it does have the right magnitude. Yeah. All right, let's look at this one. Um, before we do it, keep in mind, when you add two vectors together, the answer is always a new one. It's always a new vector. Okay, so the answer that you write here has to be a vector. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, it's like they cancel each other out. Because you need to line up the end point of V with the start point of W. So you need to line up those purple dots. Once you line those up, you need to connect the start point of V to the end point of W. So once you line up the purple dots, then connect the yellow dots. Well, let's line up the purple dots. And how? what would happen if I tried to connect the yellow dots? Yeah, it wouldn't do anything. So this would represent like if you had a boat and you had a fan blowing on each side, exactly the same strength, nothing would happen. It's basically like everything would just stay the way it is. Everything's balanced. Uh, could also be like a like a tug of war, and who you know each side is pulling exactly the same. So there's no there's no movement at all. Okay, so the answer that you put is this. You can either do a bold zero, or you can do a zero with a line on top. There is no way to draw it. There's no picture because it, it cancels out. Okay. This is called the zero vector, either one of those symbols. It's the only vector that technically doesn't have a direction because it's zero. So it has, it has no direction to it. It also has no length. That's why you can't draw it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So any question on that one? All right. <coughs> so I, I kind of showed you this already. Um, I didn't show you associative, but I did show you commutative. Commutative means you can change the order that you add things in, and you get the same answer. I'll do it one more time, but I'm, I'm going to do it with two vectors. If you want to add vector v and w, you can do v plus w or w plus v. You get the same answer. Okay, so let me do v plus w first. That means you take v, put w on the end of it, like this. There's v, there's w, and then draw your diagonal. Pretty close. Okay, so that's v plus w. Now let me switch it and do w plus v. So now start with W and put V on the end. Okay, that, is, that is different than what I did before in terms of like the order. Now, final answer. Well, let's see. Draw this and then match it to what we just, oops, what we just did. Yes, yeah, circles, everything. Um, yeah, looks pretty good. Just about the same. So any question on how the order doesn't make a difference? Okay. Now, associative, that has to do with uh, not the order. It's the same order on each side, A, B, C, A, B, C. But it's order of operations. What are you doing first? And if you think of these as numbers, like 1 plus 2 plus 3, if you do 1 plus 2, that gives you 3, and then 3 plus 3 is 6. 
or if you do 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6. So it, it's, it's pretty much the same idea. Uh, a little harder for me to show and do it really accurate because now I need to use three vectors. So the more I use, um, the more chance there is I mess something up. But I'll, I'll try to show it. So on the left, um, which two is it saying to add together first? A and B. So let's try to do that. That's A plus B. <coughs> and again, I'm just going to draw it the best I can. Looks okay. okay. So there's A plus B. And then what does it say to add on to the end of that? C. C. Um, I'm going to change C a little bit just because I don't want it to be perfectly horizontal. As long as I change it before I start the problem, that's fine. So let's add C onto the end of it. All right. Now connect where you started to where you stopped, and that's going to be A plus B plus C. That's the answer that you get doing it the way on the left. Questions on that? Now, on the right, what two does it say to add first? B and C. B and C. Okay. So let's take B and put C on the end of it. Just like that. All right. And draw that. So let's do... So there's B plus C. All right, so I'm done with those. And that's B plus C, and that goes on the end of what? Goes on the end of A. So here's A. And B plus C goes on the end of it. All right, let's draw that. Now again, I just kind of did it by eye, and I'm not using... Um, I didn't really measure carefully, but uh, yeah, it's pretty close. It's about it's about what it should look like. So the order doesn't make a difference. Okay, so what do you think the difference between a vector and then putting a negative symbol in front of a vector is? What do you think? Think about it uh, if you were to draw it. What do you think the negative would change? Yeah? Flip it 180 yeah, it basically flips it 180 degrees. Right? It's, it's the direction that they point. And specifically, they point in opposite directions. But it doesn't change the magnitude. Okay? It just flips it the other way. So if you had a vector pointing up and you put a negative in front of it, now it points down. So kind of visualize this earlier, but what do you think would happen if you took this and added it to that? You get what? The zero what? Vector. Yeah. You get the zero vector. Because they point in opposite directions, but they're exactly the same length. So if you add them together, should be either a bold zero or you could put a line on top. You do it either way. Now, there's a reason that I mentioned putting a negative in front of a vector. What, um, what operation do you think I'm going to start getting into in a second with vectors? Subtraction. Subtraction. Yep. Because when you take a negative and you put it in front of a number, it basically just makes it into a subtraction problem. So let's think about this. Okay. Um, let's say you wanted to do 3 minus 2. <coughs> and you don't understand how to do subtraction. But you do understand addition. You understand everything about addition. How could you turn this into an addition problem? 
plus negative two. Yeah, three plus the opposite of the second number. And that's exactly how we do subtraction with vectors. We don't really do subtraction. We change the subtraction problem into an addition problem. Keep the first vector the same, and then add the opposite of the second vector. And that's really subtracting. And remember, opposite just means you just spin the vector around 180 degrees. So to subtract two vectors, find the opposite of the second one. So flip it around, and then add it. And that's subtraction. Let's try uh, taking two vectors, uh, subtracting them, and uh, we'll see how to do it. So I want to find v minus w. How could you rewrite v minus w so it's addition and not subtraction? Yep. Plus w. Right, so it's V plus the opposite of W. Right, that's the first thing you need. You've got to find negative W. So how, how does negative W compare to regular W? What's going to be the difference? Just the direction. How about the length? It's going to be exactly the same. So if I want to get it like perfect, what I can do on the smart board is just take that, and I can't, there's no button to rotate 180, but I can flip it horizontally, and I can flip it vertically. And that is the same as rotating 180 from geometry. So there's negative value. Right, now we just do it like it's addition. Take V, add negative W on the end of it, and then connect where you started to where you stopped. And that's V minus W. Try to just draw it as straight you know, as you can. Any question on taking two vectors and subtracting them? So what you might see on like Edge Elastic for something like this is um, I'll give you like multiple choice. I'll give you four vectors, I'll draw them out, and you'll have to pick which one would be V minus W. It's, just, it's easier than having um, you draw it in Edge Elastic. I think Edge Elastic, you can draw some things like lines. I don't know if you can draw vectors though. What would you call that vector? The name of it? Yeah. Well, the name, it is V minus W. Okay. That's, that's what it is. That is the vector V minus W. If you wanted to give it a new name, you, you could. Um, we generally don't. But, yeah, just V minus W. OK. So first thing I showed you guys was vector plus a vector. That's the first thing we did. Second thing we did was a vector minus a vector. Whether you're adding two vectors or subtracting two vectors, the final answer that you get was what? When you add two vectors together, we got a new one. Yeah, the answer was a vector. When we subtracted two vectors, what kind of answer did we get? We got a vector. So we started with two vectors and we combined them. What I'm going to show you next is a number times a vector. This is not a vector times a vector. Okay, we'll, we'll do that on Wednesday. This is a number times a vector. So instead of just putting like a V, put like a 3V. 
What do you think the three would do to that? Increase the magnitude. Yeah, by how much? Three. three times as much, yeah. Okay, so this is called a scalar product, scalar multiplication. Because essentially what putting a number in front of a vector does is it scales it. Now, you don't, even, you don't always have to scale it bigger. You could also scale it what other way? Smaller. You could make it smaller if you put a fraction, like one, one third. So the result, I didn't write it on the other page, but the result is another vector. Could be longer than the original. Could be shorter than the original. And it can do one other thing. What else do you think putting a number in front of a vector could do? It. it could flip it if you had what kind of number? Negative. Yeah, that's, that's the only other thing that can happen. It can make it shorter, make it longer, or it can flip the direction if the number is a negative. But that's all it could do for direction. It can make it exactly the opposite. It can't, it can't rotate it a little bit. It can either have it the original or 180 degrees from the original. Okay, so this is a number times a vector. And we get a new vector. So Wednesday, we'll look at vector times vector. And we'll see what happens. And the answer to what happens is, um, it depends. It depends. We'll talk about that on Wednesday. Okay. Does everybody have that? Okay. All right. So here they want us to find two v and one half v. How could I get, because I don't have any, let's say I don't have any graph paper. How could I get 2D exactly on my smart board? Just, just yeah. duplicate that and put it together. Yeah, just make two copies of it and just put them together. So it's very easy to do, at least on the smart board, an integer multiple. I just need to copy it as many times as the number says. So kind of the beginning to the end. So it's basically like we just did v plus v. That's 2v. And then draw your answer. So what's in red, that's, that's the final answer. All right, now how about um, 1 half v? Is that going to change the direction because it's a fraction? <coughs> no. What, what will the 1 half do? Yeah, it's going to make it half as long. Uh, there is no way I can do that exact. I don't, I don't have like a scale by 50% or anything, so I'm just going to estimate it. Say about like that. Now, to connect that to like, a, like an airplane flying, when you have one half V, did the direction of the plane change? No, what, what did change about it? How fast it's going, right? This plane is going in the same direction, but it's going half as fast. Okay, any questions on that? Let's try this one. Um, so here's V, there's the original. They want me to find negative V and negative one third V. You can put negative v or you can put negative 1v. That's the same thing. All right, so how's v going to compare to negative v? What, what do we do? It's the reverse. Rotate it how we do Yeah, so I could do that thing where I, I flip it and then flip it, or I'm just going just gonna to estimate it this time. About like that. Okay, so there's negative v. Now, how about negative one third? Okay. Yep. Rotate one hundred and eighty degrees and cut it into into one third. Right. Yep. 
Now you you could write it this way. You don't you don't see it this way a lot. It, it is v divided by three. That, that's what you're doing. But if you imagine there's a one in front of it, there's your one third right there. So it is, it's one third v, and negative in this case. So I'm going to take the one I already have, flipped, and just estimate what I think is about one third. What's that? Well, the original oh, one was, yeah, I used the one I already flipped. Yeah. Now, in graph paper, if you want to do it exact, all you have to do is look. If you went over 6 and up 3, cut that by a third, and then it'll come out perfect. Instead of over 6 and up 3, go over 2 and up 1. And that, that should work. It'll still have the same slope, same same angle, but it'll only be one third as long. Any questions on that? Okay, um, let's pick one of them. Um, you want to do the, the, the 2v plus 3w or the, the one after it? The one after it? Okay. So let's just do that one. So we, we gotta kinda plan ahead a little bit. Because if we put the if we put the arrows too close to like the edge, we might go off the grid. And if we're trying to measure something, we need to stay stay on the grid. So V goes up and to the right. W we're gonna flip that around, so that's gonna go up and to the left and U goes up, so we have a lot of up. So we're gonna wanna start down, okay? Give us uh, plenty of space to go up a lot. So there's, n there's nothing here that is gonna go down at all. Everything is up and up. But we're gonna go right, we're gonna go left, and then we're gonna go right again, so I'd probably start kind of in the middle. It's Let's start right about there. Okay, um, what's the first thing we need to start adding these up? Twice its length. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to make two copies of it. Actually, I'll just take those two. So put that one. And yeah, close. All right, so there's 2v. Now, what goes on the end of that? Negative w. Negative w. So I need to take w, um, flip it around. So now it's pointing up and to the left. So there's negative w. All right. And what goes on the end of that? u. So take u, put that right about there. And the final answer is to connect where we started to where we finished. This looks basically like that. Now, does that new vector have the same direction as the originals? No. It doesn't have the same direction as any of them. It's kind of close to that last one, but not even exactly. Does it have the same length of any of the originals? No. Okay. If I put that, it doesn't matter where I put it. Let's just say I put it, it was right, right about there. How could you figure out how long that is? Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, exactly. You could do Pythagorean theorem. Okay, we're not going to get into that too much today, but you just make a triangle out of it and then use Pythagorean theorem. Yep. And that would be finding the magnitude. And the symbol um, for finding the magnitude is when you take a vector and you put double double lines around it. Kind of kind of like absolute value, but it's double lines. So double lines mean magnitude of the vector. Well, 
was going to ask you, but I just kind of showed you. Uh, the magnitude is a measure of how long something is. If you measure how long something is, what kind of number do you always get? Positive. It's always positive, right? You can't you can't have a negative magnitude because it's a length. So if you can't have a negative magnitude, then I want to know what the difference would be between these two answers. Like the final answer to this problem and the final answer to that problem. What would be the difference between the final answer? Yeah? There'd be no difference. There'd be no difference. If you said, well, wait, you're pointing in opposite direction. Yeah, but that's not the final answer. The final answer is how long is this one and how long is that one? The only difference between these vectors is the way that they point. So this is kind of like measuring the distance from where I am to the door or from the door to where I am. It's just the direction you measure, but it's the same way. When we started uh, trig, there was a type of circle we talked about. Um, and this circle had a radius of 1. Does anybody remember the name of that? Unit circle. A unit circle. Well, now we're going to talk about a vector with a length of 1. Anyone have a guess what kind of vector that would be called? Yeah? That's called a unit vector. So if you find the length of a vector, and it comes out to exactly one unit, one inch, one foot, one whatever, that's called a unit vector. All right, so all the, all the drawing we've done, yeah, that's good, but drawing, it, it's time consuming, right? You need, if you want to do it accurately, you need graph paper, and you need a, if you're doing it on, you know, by hand, you need a ruler, or if you're not, then you need a computer with, with a grid, and you need something to draw straight lines. So drawing, it has its place, but it's really word problems, okay, to kind of understand what's happening. We want to start to get away from drawing vectors. We want a way to just represent exactly what a vector looks like, but with numbers. So we don't have to we don't have to sketch it. There's two different ways that you can represent vectors that we're going to learn about without sketching. Okay, the first one our book calls um, an algebraic vector, and it looks something kind of like this. I just have to explain to you what the two numbers are. What what does it kind of look like? It, it's not this at all, but it kind of, what? Greater than or equal, greater than lesser than. Oh, the two symbols? Um, that looks like a point. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It kind of looks like a coordinate, but it doesn't have parentheses. Uh, I don't actually know if those are, yeah, I think they are less than and greater than symbols. Um, we're not using them in that context. But these symbols, which I'm going to call them like angle brackets, represent a vector. In 2D, you put two numbers in the angle brackets. In 3D, you would have three. You'd have four. So A and B are what we call the components of the vector. If I go back to the other page where we were doing the Pythagorean theorem, I can show you very easily the components. So I'll, I'll come right back to this. But look at this page. This black vector, this is the horizontal component of the black vector. One, two, three, four, five. And this is the vertical component. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if you wanted to represent that vector in black as, like, without drawing it, that's what it is. It's a horizontal of 5 and a vertical of 9.
So A tells you horizontal, that's the left and the right, and B tells you the up or the down. Now, if you wanted to go down, what kind of number do you think you'd use in the B spot? Yeah, you'd use a negative. Just like if you wanted to go left, you'd use a negative in the A spot. Yep. So you can kind of think of it as, um, it's like directions. Here's a start point. Here's a stop point. How do you get from the start to the stop? There you go. One, two, three, right. One, two, three, four, five, up. Three, comma, five. Just make that up. So again, A is the horizontal, left or right, B is the vertical, up or down. Kind of being redundant, but I'm sure people understand that. So let's draw the vector 2, 3. This notation tells me how far left and right, how far up and down, but there's something it doesn't tell me. Yeah? I, I have a question. Yeah. In the calculus, is it always assumed that up and the right are positive, or do you just need to mark your page? Uh, no, up and right would always be positive All right. directions. Yeah. In a 2D coordinate system, yeah. So what, what doesn't this tell me? Tells me to go two right and three up. Doesn't tell me where to start. So you can start anywhere you want. You can start here, go two right, and then go three up. One, two, three. I want to just make that so we can see it a little better. That's the vector two, three. Or start here, two right. 3 up. That's the vector 2, 3. Or do it over here. 2 right, 3 up. Or do it right here. Those are all the vector 2, 3. As long as I drew them all. Uh, this one I don't think I drew right. 2 right, 3 up. Sorry about that. Now, uh, out of all the different places I drew them, where do you think the most common place to start from is? Yeah. So usually, when we draw a vector, we start at the origin. So if you position your vector so that it starts at the origin, that's called a position vector. In that case, the terminal point, basically, if you have the coordinate of the terminal point, if you just change the parentheses to angle brackets, it becomes a vector. But only if you start at the origin. So I want to look at the same example we just had, but what happens if you don't start at the origin? How can we figure it out what the position vector would be? And that will be the last thing that we do. So let's, let's get rid of these and let's look at just this one over here. Let's write down the coordinates. Make that as big as I can so you can see it. Of where it starts and where it stops. What's the coordinates of where it starts? 5, 2. Five, two. And what's the coordinate of where it ends? Seven, five. Seven, five. So if you know the start and the end, you can work backwards to figure this out. Okay, we already know the answer. Is there some way that you can get a two in the first spot using the seven and the five? Seven minus five. The end x value minus the starting 
X value. Yep. And then how could you get a 3? So 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2. The ending Y value minus the starting Y value. It's important you do it in that order. End minus start. Okay. All right, so let's just write that down. So to find a position vector, if you know where it starts and where it stops, they usually call the two points where they start and stop. One's P1, the other one is P2. P1 is usually the start. P2 is the second point. That's the stop. So if you wanted to find the horizontal component of this vector, these are the two things that would be involved. And how would you subtract? What would be the order? x2 minus x1. x2 minus x1. Ending point minus starting point. If you wanted to find the, the vertical, and you know where it starts and stops, you'd use those two. What order would you subtract those in? Y2 minus Y1. Yep. So that's how you find a position vector if you have a vector that's just in the middle of the coordinate plane somewhere. Just find the start and the stop and fill them in. Any question on that one? So let's find the position vector for those two points. Now, they didn't label which one is which. If they don't label them, I told you that P1 is usually Y. That's the initial. Think of like the first P1 is the first one. It's the initial. And P2, turn. Start, stop. What's going to be your um, calculation to get the horizontal component? 4 minus negative 1. 4 minus negative 1. And 6 minus 2. And 6 minus 2. So if we write this as a vector, no sketching, what would be your horizontal component? So that means you'd go 5 to the right from the origin. And then you'd go how many up? Six minus two, four up. So that's the vector five, four. How do you determine which one's initial again if they don't say it? If they don't say P1 is always initial, P2 is terminal. Okay. I think they they usually say, I just I didn't. But I would clarify that on the test. Is this combined with that Pythagorean's theorem of distance formula was found? Um, I don't know which one kind of came first. I, I would um, I would think Pythagorean theorem probably came before all you know this. But yeah, they are they are connected when we talk about the magnitude of a vector. But I would think somebody figured out that before they even invented vectors. That would be my guess because that's more basic. This is kind of an application. Okay, any question? All right. Um, so the homework uh, in the book is 1 to 10 all, 14 to 22 even. But then on 26 to 32, um, they ask you to do something we haven't done yet. All I want you to do is find the position vector. So what we just did at the end of class. Okay, so we'll, um, we'll go over that tomorrow, and then we'll um, look at the second part of vectors, which, just as a reminder, it's 8.5 in the textbook we've been using all year, but the worksheet tonight is going to say 5.4 at the top. You still just have to click it in school with you. It's all, all organized like it always is. 
So tonight's homework is lesson. Tonight's homework is lesson forty-two. Okay, forty-two. 